Welcome to the breathtaking Tairona National Park, an absolutely stunning place located by the Caribbean coast of Colombia. I got to explore this place with my boyfriend Rol and our new friend Julienne. We decided to spend two nights here, sleeping one night at an eco lodge and the other night in a hammock. And in this video, you'll get to join us on our adventure here and I'll be sharing with you guys what it's like visiting Tairona National Park. Hello everyone, my name is Janika and welcome to this video. I am currently right by the entrance of the famous Tairona National Park here in Colombia and soon we're going to be entering the National Park. I'm super excited to get to explore this place, it's a bit of a bucket list destination to visit for me. It's supposed to be so so beautiful so I can't wait. But before entering we're first gonna have some lunch. When visiting Tairona National Park, keep in mind that there are four different entrances. El Zaino is the main entrance and also the most popular one. This national park spans over 150 square kilometers of land, so make sure to choose the entrance wisely depending on what you want to see. This was our first time here, so we decided to enter from El Zaino. When entering, you have to pay for an entrance fee and also health insurance. The entrance price for a tourist is 62,000 pesos in the low season season and 73.5 thousand pesos in high season plus 6 thousand pesos for the health insurance. We have arrived to our first night's accommodation. So for the first night we decided to stay at one of these eco lodges here. We managed to find one for a pretty good deal, especially because we're in a group of three. So we managed to find like a place with a bigger room and then we were able to share the costs. So it's not that expensive at all and we even have a swimming pool and breakfast things included and everything. So yeah, it's a nice thing to have now, a bit of a nicer place where to sleep now for the first night. And then tomorrow night we'll be sleeping in a hammock. We have now come down to the pool and I must say it's so nice to now one night stay in a bit more of a proper place and get a good night's sleep and we can also then tomorrow leave our luggage here so we don't need to carry it around and then tomorrow go off on more of an adventure and sleep in a hammock and stuff but before that it is nice to have a bit of a more relaxing time. It's the perfect balance of both worlds I would say. First I honestly thought like staying in one of these hotels or eco lodge within Tairona National Park wouldn't be doable because I thought it would be super super expensive but at least this one where we're staying it's a really good price so yeah at least so far I really recommend this place if you're coming to Tairona and looking for something that's still affordable but also to have a proper bed and a shower and a pool and that kind of stuff. We have now checked out from our accommodation. It was super nice. Now we don't need to start our day by standing in line to get into the national park. Apparently in the mornings the lines can get quite long, but now we're already in here so we can just start our hike directly. Funny thing, I've been traveling for over three months now and on this whole trip I haven't met a single Finnish person. But now out of all the places we've been to here at this accommodation, there was actually a Finnish couple and uh, yeah, we spent the evening with them yesterday and stuff. So that was quite fun. So 
today we're going to be visiting several different beaches and we don't know at which hammocks we're going to be staying yet. We're going to see a bit what they look like, which spot would look the best. Eventually today we're also going to reach the beach called Cabo San Juan, which is probably the most famous beach here. It's probably if you Google title on a national park, that's what you're going to see photos of. It's pretty like a two, three hour hike to Cabo San Juan from here, but we're going to be stopping on the way and swimming and, and it's also all jungly and hopefully we can maybe see some monkeys or something because apparently there's a lot here. But um, yeah. Let's start hiking. I need to catch up a bit because I'm being left behind whilst filming. We are currently walking in the jungle. There's a cool big rock next to me. <laughs> and it's nice because they've really made like a proper path where to walk along. The first beach we visited, unfortunately you were allowed to swim there, but the waves were just too rough for swimming. So let's hope some of the other beaches would be a bit calmer and that we could go for a dip. But yeah, such a cool place. I love it. Oh my God, it's a monkey. just saw some monkeys and really up close they weren't scared of people at all they were so cute i'm so happy now if we could still find a beach where to swim i'll be i'll be satisfied to be honest Excuse my sweaty look, but there's a bunch of different beaches here and at some beaches you are allowed to swim and at some you're not. And here's the reason why you're not allowed to swim at some of the beaches. So far we've walked around nine and a half kilometers, something like that, and now we stopped for a lunch break. And we still have a few more kilometers to go. And so the hike continues. arrived to Playa de Piscina and this is now the first beach where we can swim. It's actually really beautiful. There's some waves but it's not too bad like in Palomino the waves were much bigger. The water is clear and there's not that many people. Like on this whole beach there's maybe 10-15 people. so nice the water's so clear you can see right through wow what a place
We have now arrived to the famous San Juan and here they have a really big camping ground. You can sleep in a tent, like a bigger tent or a smaller tent and then they have hammocks. Unfortunately, the cheaper hammocks that are like on the ground were already sold out, but we arrived a little bit later. It's already um, 3 p.m. But they still had these Mirador hammocks. They were a bit more expensive, so 60,000 pesos per person. Supposedly, we we're gonna have a really beautiful view from there and stuff, so maybe it's gonna be even nicer and yeah i just went swimming but i feel like i'm already sweaty again they really love these wristbands here you get one for everything that hut over there is where we're going to be sleeping arrived to the hammocks my only concern is that there doesn't seem to be a bathroom and I don't know how we're supposed to in the middle of the night climb down from here every time we need to use the bathroom so that that concerns me a little bit but um, we'll see not entirely sure how I'm gonna sleep in here but it feels comfortable my concern is what to do with I don't have a lot of stuff but I still have a bunch of cameras I feel like sleeping with a bunch of cameras is super comfortable Over here we have the hammocks that are downstairs. These ones seem to have also a mosquito net and maybe a little bit more space in between. And the bathroom's over there. So it is starting to seem like staying in a mirador is not as good of a deal. First of all, you pay more, but there's no lights up there. Apparently in the night time, so it's gonna be pitch dark. And there's also no bathrooms. And the way up and down is a bit of a climb. So you would have to walk down in complete darkness or climb down in complete darkness and risk, you know, slipping or injury and walk really far away just to get to the toilets. And there are lockers, but the lockers are only for people staying in the hammocks downstairs. And the funny part is that people staying here downstairs pay less, but um, yeah, they were full now, so we couldn't stay there, but it seems a bit weird. We're paying more, but we get a worse deal. So yeah, if you come here, if possible, I would say even if the view is nice from up there, it is much handier to stay down here. I've never actually slept a full night in a hammock. Well, I've only maybe taken a nap in a hammock some summer afternoon in Finland, but I've never like slept, slept in a hammock. So we'll see how that goes. At least the views are absolutely amazing. So Cabo San Juan can apparently get quite crowded. Probably if you come in the daytime, then all the tour groups come here with boats and stuff. But yeah, at the moment is really, really nice. Probably also in the weekends, it's more busy. Today it is a Friday. Or if you would come at like a high season travel time. So like around Christmas or something. But at the moment, it's not too crowded at all. It is quite pricey though. Like our lunch was quite expensive, I think and the restaurant that they have here is also quite expensive. The portions for dinner are around 40,000 to 60,000 pesos, which is for like a Colombian standard quite a lot. Like usually we pay 40 pesos for a nicer meal and here it's probably gonna be very, very basic.
good morning. Last night was, let's just say it was interesting. <laughs> First of all, it gets quite cold up there. I think if you sleep on the lower level, it's fine. But up there, it's so windy. I'm so happy I had this cocoon thing with me. It's like this little pouch where you can sleep in. And I had the sarong. Without these, I would have I would have frozen to death. Like it was already cold with them. I was also having a bit of stomach issues. So I actually ended up having to run to the toilet. That was super, super far away a few times. And it felt a little bit scary walking in a pitch dark beach in the middle of the night by myself. Also knowing there was a caveman right uh, next to me and stuff. Yeah, that was a little bit creepy and not so fun. Unfortunately, I also have a bit of a migraine today. So I'm a little bit worried about this hike back. It's at the moment not even 7 a.m. but the breakfast selling hadn't opened yet and we've now decided to instead to already start walking now when it's still not hot yesterday I checked we walked about 15 kilometers so that's roughly the distance from the entrance to Cabo San Juan so if you are doing just a day trip by walking then you would have to walk like 30 kilometers if you want to walk all the way to Cabo San Juan so it's quite a walk honestly I'm not feeling the greatest at the moment wish me luck We've already made it basically to the beginning of the trail. We still have like the part to our hostel and from there to the entrance, I think it's about half an hour. And yeah, having a small break and then we need to pick up our stuff and yeah, we've walked super fast. I'm surprised, quite sweaty, but it was much easier to walk now when it was still the morning and not so hot. We have now come back to where our trip began. So the same restaurant and we had some food. I was so hungry, so I didn't even film it, but I had the same thing as the last time. Now our journey continues to Minka. So I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you for watching. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to join the journey. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.